Hello everybody, welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I've chosen one single topic for today um, that I'm going to talk about at length because it comes up a lot and um, I've recently gotten four or five inquiries about this so I thought well I will just create a nice long referenced article, I think there are 12 or 13 references to this, uh, about this topic and then I'll cover the high points with you on video clips here. All right, so it concerns vitamin K shots at birth. The Centers for Disease Control and the American Academy of Pediatrics both recommend that all newborns be given a vitamin K shot shortly after birth. The practice has been routine since 1961, and the reason for it is to prevent or slow a rare problem, which is bleeding into the brain. The bleeding can even can start within a few hours. That's called very early vitamin K deficiency bleeding disorder, or it can begin several weeks later. Now, one of the main roles of vitamin K is blood clotting. Humans generally get their vitamin K from food. Principal source is leafy green vegetables. The body will synthesize vitamin K in the gut microbiome. And then, of course, the vitamin K in the shot is a little bit different synthetic. The Centers for Disease Control states that parents who refuse the shot do so because they're misinformed about the issue and they urge healthcare professionals to, quote, talk to expectant parents about the benefits of a single vitamin K shot after birth before, in uh, bold print, they get to the delivery room, end of quote. The argument for vitamin K shots shortly after birth is that babies are born with low vitamin K levels and according to the CDC, newborns have no bacteria in their intestines. The CDC states on their website it takes, quote, weeks to months for the infant's sterile gut to become established and functional. The agency argues that this means without the vitamin K shot, all infants are at high risk for vitamin K deficiency bleeding. Now, the CDC does acknowledge on this same website page where I got this information that infants whose mothers took medications that interfere with vitamin K metabolism, such as anti-convulsants, anti-tuberculosis drugs, warfarin, barbiturates, are at higher risk of early vitamin K bleeding disorder, which can start a few hours after birth. Another cause of the bleeding is liver disease, which can remain undetected until the onset of bleeding. Infants who are exposed to drugs or alcohol during the mother's pregnancy or breastfeeding are at higher risk for some type of liver damage. Classic vitamin K deficiency bleeding is also more likely in infants who are ill or have and or have feeding problems. The CDC says that infants who do not get the shot at birth have an 81 times greater incidence or risk of developing early vitamin K deficiency bleeding than women who get the shot and that the incidence falls to less than 1 in 100,000 if parents will give their children the shot. Now, bleeding into the brain occurs between three and seven weeks after birth. The incidence for infants who don't get the injections, five in 100,000. 40% of those infants suffer some type of permanent disability or die. 90% of the affected infants are breastfed, and the reason why the incidence is lower in formula-fed infants is that formula is fortified with very high amounts of vitamin K. Now, with all of that, you might be thinking, well, this is a slam dunk, all right? But I'm going to give you some other um, things to think about here. The first thing I'm going to start with is that the CDC states its estimate of risk reduction in relative rather than absolute terms, which makes the benefits seem significantly greater than they really are. The incidence of bleeding into the brain is 5 per 100,000 infants who don't get the shot, 1 in 100,000 for infants who do. The CDC says 81% drop. Um, it actually is a 4% difference. And so um, we see the same sleight of hand that's used when we're talking about all medical issues, which is we talk about risks of anything in absolute terms, benefits expressed in relative terms. Preventive strategies commonly recommended to women include supplementation during pregnancy, uh, but the supplementation doesn't change the vitamin K status of the fetus. Um, now, why are so many parents saying no to this? Uh, why does the CDC have all this strong language about how misinformed parents are? Well, here's the deal. The fetus naturally has low levels of vitamin K and other clotting factors. Just before birth, for a full-term fetus, two key clotting factors increase, but not vitamin K. Now, there's a reason for this. The body maintains very tight controls on vitamin K levels, particularly during fetal development, in order to control the rate of cell division. High levels of vitamin K can cause uncontrolled cell division, leading to cancer. Now, prophylactic vitamin K shots do lower the number of bleeding episodes, but the practice increases the risk of leukemia. 
While not all studies have shown an increased risk, several well-controlled studies have, and the increased risk is estimated to be between 10 and 20 percent. One study concluded, and I'm going to read this to you because it's important, it is not possible on the basis of currently published evidence to refute the suggestion that neonatal intramuscular vitamin K administration increases the risk of early childhood leukemia. Any association may have been masked in earlier studies that did not use controls matched for time and locality by other identified factors, unidentified factors affecting variations in incidence of leukemia. Another study concluded that vitamin K shots should be used only for babies at particularly high risk of vitamin K deficiency bleeding and that a lower dose than that recommended should be considered. All right, so now you're seeing the other side of the story. Breastfeeding results in very gradual increases in vitamin K levels and healthy breastfed infants don't have bleeding episodes even if they are not given supplements. So nature's plan is for vitamin K levels to be low in infants, whereas the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics make it seem like these naturally low levels of vitamin K are actually some form of pathology that needs to be treated. The bottom line is that there are 1.5 extra cases of leukemia per 100,000 children who are given vitamin K injections. And, one, and five additional bleeding episodes or deaths per 100,000 infants who are not given the injections. Now, the risk of bleeding episodes is higher for babies exposed to drugs or alcohol, whose mothers took medications, who have feeding, delayed feeding or feeding disorders. So it can be argued that the risk is even lower for babies who don't have these risk factors, which leads some parents to conclude that the risk-benefit analysis leans more toward saying no to the shot. Um, the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics continue to promote the shots without much discussion at all about, um, about the risks associated with them. Additionally, the CDC's promotional information contains errors, including the statement that the newborn's gut is sterile and that it takes several weeks for the baby to acquire some bacteria uh, to become, or for the baby's gut to be colonized with bacteria. The truth is, and what facts show, is that uh, during pregnancy, babies actually begin to acquire some bacteria from the placenta. There are 300 different varieties of bacteria in the placenta, which have been found in the intestines and mouths of babies. Additionally, babies acquire, those that are vaginally born, acquire bacteria as they come through the birth canal. And uh, during the third trimester in preparation for this, the bacterial population actually increases in the vagina. Uh, within one week, stable bacteria flora is established and it's even better and stronger if the baby is breastfed. So the statement about being bacterial ster bacterially sterile at birth is absolutely incorrect. Another consideration is reactions to the shot itself. Now, the information on the website is a little frightening. I'm not going to read it all to you, but the package insert for the uh, vitamin K shot includes this statement, quote, Severe reactions, including fatalities, have occurred during and immediately after intravenous injection of vitamin K, even when precautions have been taken to dilute it and avoid rapid infusion. Several severe reactions, including fatalities, have also been reported following intramuscular administration. So that's one thing. Um, the insert says that the vitamin K is virtually devoid, devoid of pharmacodynamic activity, except in humans and animals deficient in vitamin K. The ingredients listed include polyoxal 35 castor oil, dextrose monohydrate, water, benzyl alcohol, hydrochloric acid. Some of the warnings include statements such as benzyl alcohol as a preservative has been associated with toxicity in newborns and benzyl alcohol has been reported to be associated with fatal gasping syndrome in premature infants. Um, I won't go on and read all of this to you, but obviously these are causes for concern. Now, to be fair, the risk of the side effects included in the package insert is very small, but combined with the increased risk of leukemia, the low risk of bleeding for a healthy infant, and the rather small reduction in risk as a, as, uh, as a risk of assault of the shot, uh, a very strong case can be made that routine administration of vitamin K uh, for all infants is maybe not a good idea and perhaps overkill. 
Unfortunately, the discussion about vitamin K shots rarely includes all of this that I've just told you and also does not include discussion of available alternatives. When those include supplementing breastfed infants with very low doses of oral liquid vitamin K, supplements for the mother, and I have specific dosing information in this that you can get when you read the article. Now, I want to give you some conclusions here on the basis of all of this. While the goal of this article is to provide prospective parents with information in order to facilitate informed decision making, this author, meaning me, must comment that the routine administration of vitamin K shots after birth seems to have resulted from a common practice in medicine. Tests, drugs, supplements, procedures that benefit a few specific types or groups of individuals eventually are recommended for the general population. Those who question what becomes the conventional wisdom, which says that the practices are beneficial for everybody, and people are told they're silly or, or even irresponsible for even asking about these things, are told that uh, they are silly or irresponsible and there, there aren't any other options. So in the case of what we're talking about today, it's either you have the shot or you don't have the shot. Well, in the case of vitamin K, there are reasonable alternatives, which include supplementation for the baby or the mother. Parents can also be taught for asks for, to uh, watch for signs of problems that might require more aggressive interventions such as jaundice or bleeding. Furthermore, the routine administration of vitamin K infers that humans are faulty by design. So what we're to believe from the medical profession is fetuses and newborns are actually supposed to have higher levels of vitamin K. Nature made a mistake and it's now being corrected by modern technology and medicine. It's fair to ask how humans were able to survive until better chemistry could correct this defect. So hopefully um, this is helpful for parents in, in figuring it out. You know, sometimes it's hard to hide my obvious bias for things and I, I try to give an objective presentation of the information, but when you look at this objectively, um, it is very clear to me that some infants benefit from vitamin K shots and we should make darn sure that they get them. But the idea that this in turn gets translated into a recommendation for the general population um, seems uh, like overkill, as I mentioned earlier, and I think parents should know this before they make their decision. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you next Tuesday with more news.